Hi, I'm Tom Long and today I'm talking to you from Middleton Park here on Oak Island in North Carolina. And I just thought I'd take a minute to explain a little something about what I'm doing with Island Meditations. There may be some learning that goes on. I, I might introduce something that you haven't heard before or something along those lines when we look at these different uh, Bible passages. But that really isn't the intention or the, the primary purpose of what I'm doing. And you'll notice that uh, most of the time you'll see very little of me in these videos and you'll mostly be seeing God's creation here in the coastal Carolinas. And the reason for that is as we dive into these Bible stories, what I'm hoping will happen is that you will forget that I'm even here <laughs> and that you'll just have a time to think about what it is that God would be saying to you personally through the Bible. And so that's the intent and I hope that in some way you'll be touched by God as you watch this video and I appreciate uh, very much your sharing your time with me. Thank you. For this last Sunday in Lent, we jump to John's account of Jesus' statement of purpose, which explains that the cross must be in his future. Today's story begins at the height of Jesus' earthly popularity. Jesus had raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. At a dinner party thrown in Jesus' honor, a large crowd of Jews gathered to see Jesus and the man he had brought back to life. From there, that crowd spread his notoriety like wildfire, even to those who weren't Jews. Next week, we'll look at the to-do that was made when he entered into Jerusalem. Let me just read the two verses before our story begins, along with the beginning of our passage. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Now, there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. In general, those like the Pharisees for whom the status quo meant prestige and power saw the rise in Jesus' popularity as a threat. But some Jews, perhaps thinking a Messiah who could raise the dead, could throw off the yoke of Rome, and they were excited to welcome him. But it wasn't just Jews. His fans had been spreading the word about Lazarus, not just to Jews, but to everyone. That's why the Pharisees said, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. The good news was on the verge of catching fire with both Jews ready for change and with Gentiles. This expansion of the covenant had long been predicted throughout the Old Testament scriptures. But the parade was over, and the time of celebration was nearing a cosmic bump in the road. Hearing of the Greeks' request to see him, Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. <laughs> well, that makes it sound like the party's just going to kick it up a notch, doesn't it? He says the time is up. He's going to be glorified. What great news! Jesus' dignity and worth, his divine position and rank are about to be made manifest, made known to everyone. His majesty is about to be renowned. The prophet Isaiah once relayed to us these words of God in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Jesus now tells us to save the world, he is going to have to be a kernel of wheat that must fall to the ground and die in order to produce many seeds. 
That is, to bring many souls to life. As shocking as this turn of events would have been for his disciples and fans, it was even more troublesome for Jesus. He was talking about his own death. To be exalted, he must be lifted up on a cross. A prospect that would trouble anyone. It would only be human to be upset. And John had made plain from the beginning that Jesus was God made flesh, God incarnate. He, like us, was fully human. But Jesus had a purpose and he knew all that his purpose entailed. The Bible says, now my soul is troubled and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Jesus would do what had to be done because he wanted to glorify his heavenly Father. He told the disciples that Satan's power would be broken and that he, Jesus, would draw all people, not just Jews, but all people to himself. But to do that, he would have to be, quote, quote, lifted up, which in John means the full package, lifted up on the cross, lifted up from the grave, lift, lifted up from earth to heaven, but also to be exalted back to his heavenly throne. Paul put it this way, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. O oh God of love, thank you for sending your son Jesus for all people. May all those who are curious find warm welcomes in our churches. Help us to grow stronger in our desire to serve and follow Jesus in our community and in our world today. Amen.